Hello, this is Hawk Debian, and I am here with SCP-6666, or 6666, which I like to call the, a tree, or Titania's dead body. Now, if you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you do not like the video, then you're about to waste about 20 to 30 minutes of your time listening to me read about a tree that does not like, like, well, human life. Anyway, let's get to it. With addendum 12 and 13, which is where we are. Addendum 66, 66, 12. Reaction by Hector. During the exploration attempt detailed in addendum 6, 66, 11, SCP the, a big tree began exhibiting unusual behavior. The above ground root growth began to expand rapidly, forcing fire teams to pull the sap of safer perimeter back. SCP the big tree itself began to emit red light from seams in the trunk of it, its superstructure, and spherical glowing sacs began to appear across its entire limb system. During this time, geological pheno phenomenon was also recorded, originating somewhere beneath the cavern. However, at the same time that SC that this tree was entering its activation state, Hector began to pull against its bindings. Charlie Tower reported seeing the large Kepler guy line began ending to fray before snapping entirely as, as Hector pulled the line in half, freed from his bindings. Hector then began vocalizing, first simply shouting, but then speaking, while audio recordings of the events clearly show oh, Hector speaking in an unknown tongue. That's why I sent in the chamber at the time reported for being able to clearly understand and Hector in their native language. How this was accomplished when Hector had not previously split it any such dramatic effect is unknown. Dr. Isles, recognizing the nature of the event as it was occurring, used text to speech to transcribe the full exchange as it was occurring. The full transcript of Hector's vocalizations are available below. Hear me! Hear me! I am Hector, son of Holus, the screaming lance of the northern sky, last son of old Europe, servant eternal to the Sky King Saris von Apollyon, lord dominion of the world of men, and inheritor of Asem's iron crown. Hear me, dread Titania. Hear me now and tremble. Tremble now as you did all those many years ago when I crossed the rising sea to find you. Tremble now as you did when I drove my, my lance into your bleeding chest and, and tremble now as you did when I learned and you had already betrayed your purpose. I struck you down, demon of yore. I wrenched open your, your body and broke you. You have betrayed your masters, dread Titania. But you will not betray me. I will have your obedience. You will honor my wish and pour your poison into this grave. You will smother the corpse of your interlopers and bury them. You will do this, demon, because I have demanded of you. I am Hector, you define the divine fire of my lord's perfect will. Answer to me now, dread Titania. Hear me and tremble. <sighs> Immediately following this vocalization, Hector began previously attacking both the polyform field on the opening in, in Titania and Titania uh, herself. Hector then braced himself against the mass of Titania and, with a great effort, pulled the remaining three arms free from the interior of the, of the tree. That's Hector, using all five of, of its free arms and its fearful leverage, grabbed both sides of the opening and pulled them away from each other with a loud cracking sound. The trunk of Titania was split open and once again began to discharge a thick, dense cloud of toxic particulate, particulate in the cap even below. At the same moment, the red light that had been emanated from um, Titania began to dim and was gone and completely within four minutes, and within 14 minutes. Hector began to uh, continue to attack the side of Titania for an additional six hours. Afterwards, Hector braced itself against the side out of the time with its spear and went dormant.
Addendum 66-66-13. Redacted. The following file is level 5 uh, 66 classified. Overseer eyes only. <sighs> if you've gotten this far, you probably have the same question I did after we finished reading Dr. Bishop's report. If the thing we found here is true, then what is up with the SCP-1000 file? I went back and did some digging and was able to get the, into the first revisions of that file using your clearances. Here are, the, here are a few things I learned. The file was, was originally rewritten by Tilda Moos in 1956. The file predates the first recorded and Bigfoot sighting by two years. Jerry Crew first started noting Bigfoot tracks in Humboldt County in 1958. Tilda Moos did not work Work for the Foundation in 1956. Tilda Moose was not alive in 1956. With all that said, I want you to read this section here one more time. We forgive you. Given in, in choice for now, not forever. Let us back in. Knowing now what we know about what these things are and what they can do and what they have done, I want you to tell me, who do you think it would want I'm going to let these things back in. Who does that sound like to you? Think about it for a while, then come um, talk to me. We have a lot to work on. Shannon is already on the fourth night, and after that, I will have a decision to make. Whether or not we want to go down to the seventh floor and talk to him. Sincerely, 051. P.S. You probably want to see what we had to take a out of that report, too. The one with the fairy. The most, most unfortunate part of this job is saying people to do a job and that they don't realize is as dangerous as you do. Don't get too bummed out about it. Read and move on. We'll make sure their families are taken care of. What was the wish? Well, I'm sorry. I should have been forthcoming. I just... There were so few of us left afterwards. We dared not speak of it in fear of conjuring them back out of the darkness. But well, it's been so long now. When the first man committed the first sin, there was outrage, yes, but Assem was intolerably powerful, and we could not stand against him, meek as we were, so we prayed to the Queen Mother and asked her, her to deliver us from him, to give us the power to destroy him, and she she did. The children were born from beneath her roots, but we hated them from the moment they first emerged. Why did you hate them? Why did we hate them? Because they were like you. But we needed them. So we demand they cross the sea and bring a son to justice. And they did. His kingdom fell. His people were scattered and his sons were set to ruin. They did everything we asked of them. And we still hated them. When they returned to us, did we honor them as conquering heroes? Did we throw feasts in their name and, and praise them for doing what we could what we could not? No. No. We put them deep into the dark of the forest, away from the stars. Because the stars were only for us and not for them. They were just children, children, and they and we left them there. Out of sight and out of mind. A hundred million years, we banned them. And in their isolation, they turned cruel. You want to know what they wish for? They wish to not be alone anymore. And what did Aya do? She provided. She pulled out her own heart and gave it to them. Even knowing what they had become, she gave it willingly to them because she knew. She knew about our neglect. She knew about our apathy. Troy didn't want to be alone anymore. So she gave them her heart. and became their goddess, not ours. Sobbing. We can conclude if you'd like. <sighs> oh, there is one more thing I want to tell you before I go. I had to make a slight alteration to the exploration log. We didn't want anyone thinking our priorities were in the wrong place. Dr. Bishop was kind enough of to grab something from that temple on our way out. Grabbed it right out of the withered hands of a long dead sprite. I get the impression. I don't get the impression they'll miss it much. 
It's really inconsequential at this point. But I want you to see before we put it in storage or wherever. It's a shame. It's really very pretty. That is pretty. I like this little face. Yeah, that's really pretty. The work continues. And that is the end of S of SCP sixty six sixty six. Also known as Hector and the Dread Titania. So it appears that SCP sixty six sixty six was mostly about one of the uh, four heavenly knights of uh, of Ceres von Apollyon having gone to attack the supposed god of the Fae known as Titania. And in doing so, unleashes a poison cloud that I suppose is supposed to make the SCP-1000 entities in that dark forest completely incapable of movement or violence. In a really weird sense, the SCP almost unleashed utter destruction and doom on humanity. Wouldn't be the first time, and it won't be the last. <sighs> oh wow, that was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video. Oh, subscribe, subscribe to your channel and comment down below. I wish I got some other videos like this. Quite sure there's plenty in your recommendations right now. Because you watch something that is tagged with SCP, you probably have plenty of SCP videos to watch. If you did not like the video, then you just screwed up your, your YouTube algorithm and you wasted about 12 and a half minutes watching a video you didn't like. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy!